Juventus very much in the news for the wrong reasons because Juventus have been deducted 15 points for alleged financial irregularities and false accounting. This has been hanging over them for some time. The club's been accused of fixing the balance sheets by artificial gains from club transfers. Nothing to do with us, of course, say the club. Juventus have denied any wrongdoing. They confirm they'll appeal against uh, the decision that's been made. Now, here's the thing, Simon. Tottenham's managing director of football, Fabio Paratici, has been handed a 30-month ban from Italian football for his involvement. But now we found out today The Italian Football Federation have made a request to UEFA and FIFA for the sanction and bans to be extended beyond Italian football and apply worldwide. If Mm. that happens, Spurs could face a summer potentially. They might end up losing him. They might lose Conte as well. Yeah. I mean, this is this they're looking at an unexpected mess on the horizon, aren't they? An unexpected reverse windfall. Yeah. Albeit, I'm not entirely sure he's doing the graces of jobs at Tottenham. But notwithstanding that, it is a mess that Juventus have got themselves into. I and mean, we were speaking to Gabriel Macotti um, in um, Qatar, weren't we? Yes. Um, prior to a broadcast that we did to ascertain what exactly was going on in Juventus and what they were really being um, accused of. And it's about misrepresenting transfer values. It's about the idea that they'd cut wages when they hadn't really to get themselves around certain impl- implications of financial uh, challenges that they might have had to meet and, and, and reach financial fair play. You know... And it's, it's, it's strange because the, uh, the guys that prosecuted, that were prosecuting Juventus, only asked for a nine-point penalty. And yet the guys handed out a 15-point penalty. So Juventus are actually railing against the nature of the sanction they've been put under. Yeah. Now, this is not the first time we've seen in Italian football um, controversy around financial irregularities. Obviously, there were previous football clubs that have had situations surrounding this, and Juventus have found themselves in the middle of this again. And the board has resigned. I mean, Allegri, for me, is a bit of a clown. I mean, he's brought the Allegri name, Agnelli, sorry, not Allegri, Agnelli, Agnelli yeah. that name into a bit of disrepute. And there's a bit of a power grab going on there about who's going to run this football club. And all those guys run for the hills as quick as they possibly could. Yeah. Resigned. And Ned Vedder was obviously a great player, um, but doesn't seem to be the greatest administrator. And if Paratizzi or Parezzi, or however you pronounce it, is caught in that, then Tottenham are going to be in a very difficult position. It's interesting to see why they would think that there's a necessity for the jurisdiction to extend to upon extend to here. To here. I mean, but should the, it? Sure. It'd but, be highly but then you'd unfair think it should, in Tottenham. But, but, the, but on the other side of that, Jim, before you go to Stu, you would think it should be because FIFA, there should be a standardisation of how people conduct themselves. If you're involved in financial irregularities of a significant nature, then surely to God, you should be compromised from all aspects of football. Well, yes, alleged financial irregularities yeah. at Juventus, not at yeah. Tottenham. Yeah, but so if you're a Tottenham fan, they're quite rightly saying, well, why should we get well, victimised by this? Well, I understand Tottenham's argument, but football either governs itself properly or it doesn't. Mm. And you can't suggest that you you commit something, and I'm not suggesting he has, you can't suggest that you're part of some sort of conspiracy or irregularity and you can just hop across leagues and benefit on the basis of that. That can't also be the case. What's going on in the past can catch you up, Stuart. I mean, uh, to be honest, Panatici brought Conte to Tottenham. Yeah. And I... now Conte could be in the invidious situation of saying goodbye to him and not have him at his disposal for a number of months. I think if you're found guilty of something like this, if you're found guilty, to actually say, well, that was in Italy, I can go and work in England, I can work in Germany, is absolutely outrageous, to be fair. You know, I can understand you working outside football, potentially, but then again, I've never understood, you know, certain companies have got irregularities within their company, they fold that company and start another company up the next day. Exactly. I find that wrong. The only thing I would say is that it's the accountants... And the financial people that would have um, recategorized these things, the sporting director would be an instrument that goes and acquires players and 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 fulfills the wishes of the board to be able to recruitment policy and manage the continuity of players. I'm not entirely sure he would be sitting there with the accountants rerouting the, the the economic values of players, readjusting the transfer fees, and suggesting to the media that wages have been reduced to meet COVID losses when in fact they haven't Yeah, but you'd have all. to be across it, surely. Well, not necessarily. Why? The sporting director isn't the financial acumen behind a business. The finance director is. So with that in mind, albeit there may be an argument to suggest that they're their evaluation of players, because it all forces into young players that have been... F- 
put into deals to be able to make weight. So they've, they've effectively bought a player from one club, transferred another player to the club from their youth policy, and then valued that young player at a certain value to be able to capitalise their balance sheets in a slightly more fulsome way. Yeah. But I would be surprised if he was neck deep in it. You, you, you mm. say, all right, you've got sympathy to a degree with Tottenham, Stuart, but yeah, you think, yeah, it should affect him in his time at Tottenham. Well, I think if he's been directly implicated in this, in, in false doing, I, I can't see how he can come to work for Tottenham. I, I'm, I, I don't think that... It it's doesn't like, sit well with In terms with us, of his credibility, it? his credentials. Yeah. Well, you're professional. You, you should have professional qualifications to work in football. And you do. You have to have certain certifications and badges to be able to coach and manage. FIFA agents have to be licensed. And we'll be, that's laughable. If you're Daniel Levy, are you nervous about this? Well, it depends if you think he's doing a good job. If you, don't, if you don't think he's doing a good job and his recruitment, Conti, seems to be setting himself on fire with his ridiculous comments, then maybe you think to yourself, this might be an easy way to get out of a problem. The, the, well, there is that, but only you can look at it that way. Um, it's always an opportunity out there, <laughs> absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Somewhere along the line, Simon, things could get mightily uncomfortable if what is being alleged in Italy catches him up here in London. Well, yeah. I mean, you've got to suggest that FIFA got the jurisdiction to do this because seemingly they might not have to. Yes. Because if they had, if there was a governance that said, as a matter of course, you are you are done for one thing in one country, it prohibits you from working everywhere else, right? If that legislation already exists, then FIFA would have the jurisdiction and there wouldn't be a question. It wouldn't be for the Italian authorities to rail against FIFA and suggest you need to be sanctioning the guy in England. It would already be done. It would be a flow-through. Right. So I would suspect this is all puff and stuff. And what if I'm Tottenham, I'd be turning around to the Italians and say, how about you get on with your bleeding business? You can see him saying that as well, Stuart. It would be a very short email, um, but expressed yeah. exactly like that. Yeah, well... Yeah. I've seen it for myself firsthand. We were in the studio with the fella, but I, I'm still <laughs> astounded that it doesn't go across football. Yes. You know, if we... we Standardisation, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to implicate individuals being guilty if they're not guilty, but if you're found guilty of being hands-on and being part of that and whatever, I can't see never any... Had, you never underestimate the immaturity and the la-la land that is football, do you? I no. mean, I, I don't know... If you're a FIFA licensed agent and you're banned from operating in one country, are you banned from... I mean, I think FIFA or agents should be banned full stop, but that's a different discussion. But I wonder how much they catch people in their in their conducts. And it needs to be standardised because either, either there's a code of conduct that should be accepted in football as a basic principle, or there isn't. Right, right. Juventus are appealing that we know, but we also know the Italian Football Federation have made a request to UEFA and FIFA for the sanction and bans to be extended beyond Italian football and apply it worldwide. If that happens, Paratici is in a world of trouble. Uh, we've asked FIFA for their comment on this this morning and they've come back with us very straight and blunt. No comment. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.